Hey everyone, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on what time of day you are choosing to um, watch this video. Um, you are watching this because we are not having class uh, together and because there's a really cute kitty um, that was behind me and now it's now she's over there. Um, anyway, um, so I wanted to make a couple of videos in lieu of having lecture together. And so these videos are going to include, um, or conclude, I guess I should say, our conversations about different precipitation types. Um, and then that will basically close the book on unit two. So we've gone through the basics of unit one, and now we're, we will finish up unit two where we talked about heat moisture and precipitation so with that um do know that um instead of having the, the exam this week we'll have it next week just kind of moved some due dates around a little bit which is fine i just want us to have some time together to uh to be able to um have like some some review time so that's kind of the the idea of all of that and I don't want to rush the material and, and things like that. So anyways, um, so we'll do that. And then the next couple of videos will be opening the book um, then on um, circulation and general circulation. So kind of kind of fun stuff, I think. The concepts may be a little bit difficult um, in that they're not as... Um, they're not as like tangible to think about like precipitation be like, Oh yeah, rain, rain is going to fall. This is awesome. Um, whereas with some of these, it's kind of like they're, we're talking about different forces and, uh, some that may not, um, totally click in our heads, but just know that I'm here to walk us through these, these sort of difficult concepts. Okay. So before that, uh, let's get into some of the fun stuff. So where we ended lecture on Wednesday, uh, we, talked about the two different types of clouds that make precipitation, right? So we have the warm cl cloud and the cold cloud, and the two um, precipitation formation types were the collision coalescence for warm cloud and the ice crystal method for the cold clouds. Um, so just recall, you know, which, which location or what kinds of locations would have different types of precipitation or precipitation formation, rather. Um, and then we kind of started small with ice crystals and how they grew into snowflakes and then um, how that can grow into grapple, which I noted is basically baby hail. And now um, we'll talk about hail. So hail is basically this process of these ice chunks going round and around and around and around um, the these storm clouds and get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as they're forced to like tumble around, um, these storm clouds. So it's not always as like pretty picture perfect as this schematic here on the right is trying to show where it starts as grapple, then super cooled water droplets collide with it and freeze onto it. Um, and then it can kind of rhyme, uh, again, remember that process of rhyming is that, that sort of, sort of refreezing and freezing again. Uh, while it's colliding with um, other ice crystals and other super cooled water droplets. Um, while this makes it seem like you can get like these really nice sort of perfectly circular hailstones, in reality, it's not exactly how it works. You know, we've seen a bunch of different videos now in our lab sections, um, if we've been going to lab and paying attention in lab, um, that like some of these hailstones almost look like like little COVID-19 viruses, right? Like the, like a ball with like a bunch of different, like little knobs hanging off of it. Some look like they've collided together and it's like two merged into one. Um, some have that really nice circular shape where you can see the inner layers, but they're not all that way, right? Our, our atmosphere is incredibly chaotic. Um, things happen, things smoosh, things break apart. Um, it's, it's really quite wild. So this whole process here of making hail, you know, the stronger the updrafts, the more and more and more these stones are going to tumble through the atmosphere. Um, whereas if there's not a whole lot of updrafts, like really strong ones, then you're just going to get really tiny hail. And that's essentially what we get here in San Francisco. Um, like this past winter, we had so many days where we got hail, um, but like just little pea-sized hail, nothing that did any damage. 
but like you could you could hear it. It it sounds like little like instead of like that normal nice sort of calm rain sound. Um, so it is it is kind of kind of interesting um, how that happens. Um, so eventually the hail will fall out of the ground once it's too heavy to be sustained through the updraft. And here's just a nice little like um, a drawing graphical of this situation. So if you have you know you like a, a storm that's nice and tilted over so that you can have the updraft allowing for these hailstones to basically keep on going up and around in these um, thunderstorm clouds. And remember here that you would have mixed layers. This would be a mixed phase cloud. So like maybe at the bottom there it's just um, above zero degrees Celsius. So it'd be just water droplets. And then maybe you have that layer between zero degrees Celsius and negative 40 degrees Celsius where it's a mixture of super cooled water droplets and ice crystals. And then you'll have a layer at the excuse me, at the very top that's likely below negative uh, 40 degrees Celsius where it's just ice crystals. So you're ha you have all of these phases of water combining uh, together and freezing and refreezing to make these hailstones um, to, to help them grow. Um, so here's just some uh, variations of size of hail. Um, some can be larger than a quarter. This is almost like ping pong um, sized hail. Um, it can get upwards of baseball sized hail in this case. I've seen softball sized hail before. So if anyone here plays or has played softball, um, those can get really big. Obviously that can do much more damage. Um, the largest hailstone ever recorded, um, at least in, in direct history was eight and a half inches in diameter that went through someone's roof, um, and straight up like into their house. So pretty wild it can do a lot of damage. Um, and then I really like this picture here in the bottom where you can see those visible rings where those growth and freezing and refreezing patterns occurred. Um, and in this case, you also can't really see that it's a perfect sphere. This one almost looks like an egg <laughs> or something, right? So kind of funny. Um, and of course, damage can be done. Um, it can be done to an aircraft. This is one reason why... Um, Airplanes generally don't enjoy flying through, or pilots don't enjoy flying through um, thunderstorms like this because it can do some damage, um, not only, of course, to the aircraft, but also to potentially to the people inside. Uh, so next time you get mad at anyone getting delayed or your flights getting delayed because of weather, just know that your pilot's just trying to save you from something like this, okay? Um, also, of course, you know, uh, vehicle damage, we saw... A couple weeks ago, after a, a pretty intense hailstorm in um, outside of Austin, Texas, um, we saw like a used car lot that had some pretty intense damage, but also um, you can see here as well. I did also share the picture of this woman, so I'm not going to go into super great detail here, um, but this one is just like more of a, a zoomed out view of the damage that can be done to the human body. Um, and here you can actually see some bruises on the baby's head. Um, so just kind of a general overview or like a brief overview of some of these different um, types in a sense, more so like types of precipitation. This is more like almost rain overview in a way because rain can start as grapple or snow and then it melts as it falls, which can turn into raindrops. Um, on the next slide, I have like a really nice um, image of this, by the way. Um, whereas grapple and snow can stay frozen the entire time as they fall down to the ground, which can then accumulate within a nice like white substance, which can sometimes be seen from space. Um, and then Virga is something that I haven't really mentioned yet, but um, it's basically rain that evaporates or sublimates before it reaches the ground. So it's kind of interesting. I actually have a, a picture on a couple other slides here to show that. Um, this is really common in places like Arizona, where the lower atmosphere, the atmosphere closer to the ground is incredibly dry. So even though up above you have these clouds that are really trying to make it rain, um, it's not, it's so dry that the rain just straight up evaporates before it can even make it to the ground. It's really wild to see. And not just Arizona, but really any dry place, any dry desert. Um, I would see it a lot when I was a kid when my mom um, lived in Colorado for a little bit. She lived in Pueblo, uh, Pueblo, Colorado, Pueblo West. And so I would see it there all the time. Um, so kind of cool, kind of interesting. So here's a nice little schematic that can like give you a nice overview of the different 
types of precipitation that we would expect given the temperature of the um, of the atmosphere that they're falling through. So with snow, it would stay frozen. So it'd be the war the air atmosphere would be cold enough that the snow crystals and snowflakes would stay snowflakes as they reach the ground. There'd be no melting, no any other sort of phase change going on. It would just stay as snow. Then there's something called sleet. Um, people often mistake sleet and hail. Um, they're different in that there are different dynamical processes of formation. So hail, as described a little bit earlier, you know, you're doing this freezing and rhyming um, process in the cloud. Um, whereas sleet generally will start as snowflakes within the cloud, go through a little bit warm of a layer, warm enough that those snow crystals or grapple will melt into, into raindrops, but then the raindrops will go through a frozen enough layer that those raindrops will free, freeze into little ice pellets. Um, so that's that. Then freezing rain is the most horrifying type of precipitation out there, in my opinion. So again, starts with snowflakes, goes through warm enough layer that the snowflakes melt, but then it goes through a cold enough layer that the rain freezes, but does not, it doesn't like freeze into an ice pellet. It, it's super cooled where it's froze. It's below freezing, but not frozen. <laughs> it freezes once it makes contact with a cold surface, which causes ice sheets and ice storms. Um, it's, it's really quite wild. And then with rain, it just, there's no other refreezing process. It just stays, It maybe starts as a snowflake, but then goes through a warm air pocket where, and then it just stays that way. Um, so here's just some visual representations of some of these things. If you've never seen them before, snow, snow, white stuff, um, hanging out on, um, mountaintops generally, or really anywhere where snow can, can accumulate. Um, this is grapple. So notice how grapple looks like snow, but it's like a little bit chunkier. Um, again, this is like baby hail. Um, and this is Virga. So this is, you can like, it looks like almost like little feathers or someone took like a little paintbrush and like painted it down the cloud, but then like it gets wisped, wisped, away and is generally evaporated um, or sublimated if it's still an ice crystal before it reaches the ground. Um, and this is really a really nice example of something called a microburst. Um, it kind of looks like a mushroom cloud or like a, um, like a nuclear bomb cloud. But in fact, this is just straight up a very intense rain shaft of extraordinarily intense um, water coming out of the sky. Um, this is very dangerous for things like planes trying to take off. This is actually over Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport, which is a, one of the um, most busy airports in the United States. So you can imagine if anyone's trying to forecast for stuff like this, they got to be really on their stuff. Then uh, lastly here, here is some images of what freezing rain can do. Um, these are obviously these two pictures here on the left are some pretty extreme cases of the ice coverage that can happen. Um, but some things that are actually good to do are to put your windshield wipers up um, so that they're not frozen solid to your car. Also, something that's not a thing to do would be to try to um, melt this with uh, warm water because likely the atmosphere is still cold enough where it will refreeze and it's just not a good thing. Um, and then ice storms can also uh, be very dangerous in terms of ice is very heavy. So it can freeze onto power lines and um, tree limbs and then um, it's very heavy so it can like break all these things down, which of course is not the best thing uh, in populated areas, right? Uh, not then. You can lose power that way um, very easily. And then lastly, here's just like a general overview uh, slide, kind of just showing the different types of precipitation that we have covered and kind of like the general season that they can also occur in. Um, and this is just really a super general overview of this, but this is for the most part when these things occur. So, that finishes up precipitation types. That also finishes up our unit two. Um, so please continue on the next several videos for the um, next topics for our next unit of circulation. All right. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.